Hey everybody, it's Brady from Elite Weather Forecast, and uh, today we're going to be uh, talking about Winter Storm Gale, which is on the way from the northeast. Um, it is now underway, actually, snowing quite good in PA, uh, but this is going to be a blockbuster winter storm, and it's going to be one to remember uh, for the ages for, for folks. This is it's just going to be such a widespread, uh, you know, one to two feet of snowfall. Um, that it's gonna it's gonna be remembered it's gonna be remembered as as a big time st uh, storm so without further ado let's get into it uh, play out the radar here we can see what's going on here on radar scope uh, we can see what's going on here some of our banding starting to get in we can see started off as a little bit of verga and probably is still in parts of northeast PA but we can really see the radar starting to fill in and it's about 10:45 right now and we're starting to see some of that heavier banding already come up in central Pennsylvania. <clears throat> Just as the malls were starting to pick up, places like Altoona, probably snowing pretty heavily already at the moment, uh, they will work in it. Uh, Pennsylvania will work likely in and out of banding. Um, as you can see, the radar is just going to try and fill in, and that stuff to the north is going to get cut off. And anything really north of here right now um, is not going to be snow and uh uh, matter of fact, anything north of probably, probably more like here is not going to be snow right now in Virga, uh, where the air is, is just too dry for the snow to uh, get to the ground and accumulate right now. So we're probably seeing some light accumulations um, in this area, even, the, even though on the radar it may look like um, uh, there might be some heavy accumulations, and it's possible there could be, because if you're accumulating well with the flow factor and everything, they might be doing very well right now in accumulations in, in Altoona, but they're likely not accumulating that much because of because of uh, the dry air still. And that, and but this will quickly saturate the air, uh, so, so for later that they can that they can pump precip later. And if we go a little bit to the south and west, all right. Look at towards the DC radar. You can see we already have some mixing in Charlottesville. Charlottesville mixed over a little bit earlier than we thought they would. Um, but we can see um, all along the Appalachians, we got heavy snowfall setting up. You know, we can already, we can already see our heavy uh, bands of precip working in here, right? You can see these, these are going to work uh, north and east, and we're just going to see these. Uh, continue to move and pump uh, moisture throughout the day. The, well, the bands don't pump moisture, but the storm system will pump uh, moisture throughout the day. And we're going to see these uh, continue. These see these bands continue to work northeastward until eventually. Um, I want to slide until eventually we're going to see a pivoting band set up. Uh, interesting. Uh, thank you, radar scope. There we go. Uh, until eventually, we're going to see a band, right? So we're going to see this band set up right here or something, let's say. And then we're going to see it continue to move north, right? And then just pivot, right? And just pivot and will likely be weaker over here, right? But we're going to see this band and it will just be sitting. And it will probably be, no, it will probably be uh, uh, this wide too, right? It will probably be something like that. We ended up seeing this band, and it's going to be, and it's not going to all be just one massive three inch per hour uh, band. Uh, although a lot of that band, that's the kind of snowfall we're going to be looking at from that band. Um, you know, pockets inside of that band. Um, sometimes see less. And then well, what else we're going to look for is that mix line. How far north does this mix line push? Does it? Does it stay southeast more, and can Philly get, you know, you know, double-digit snowfall, or does this mix line push uh, well into Philly, and Philly is only able to pick pick up, I say only, but Philly's pick, Philly picks up a half a foot, and then they mix after, and they pick up an additional, um, you know, one to three inches on the backside. So that's something we're going to look for, and. Um, you know, we mixed a little bit earlier in um, North Carolina, but that's not always um, a true indicator of what the mixing is like uh, going to be for the rest of the event. Uh, however, uh, it would make me a little bit concerned if you want to see snow in Philadelphia um, and, and along the I-95 cor uh, 
quarter from uh, New York City southward. That would make me a little bit um, concerned if you're looking to see big time snowfall. Um, you know, we talk about we, we zoom into the city more, and you know, I think this part of Long Island will do well. And for sure, the north part of New York City, um, snow ratios are not going to be working in your favor, but I think you're going to be thumping because we're going to see the rain snow line set up, right? And those heavier QPFs are going to set in, right, with with snow on the on the west side of this rain snow line. And it's just going to thump, right? I don't know if it, that's exactly how it's going to set up, but we're going to see it. And we're going to see very heavy snow rates, potentially one to three inches per hour set up here. And... Uh, potentially in the New York City area, and when that does, it's going to thump, believe me, and it's going to accumulate quickly, even without, uh, you know, 12, 15 to 1 snow ratios that New York City is likely not going to be able to work with. New York City is going to be likely 10 to 1, and then maybe transition over to some uh, uh, 12 to 1 ratios after the upper level low, which is going to Pass, o pass over something like this. I, I don't, it, it's just a they probably might pass over Long Island, the upper level low, but what, uh, but depending on how close that tracks is going to make a difference between uh, for New York City mixing too. So that's something we're going to have to watch quick, uh, watch very much. Now let's move into the interior. I think what we're going to see is I mentioned that band is just, it's just going to pivot, right? Something like something like that eventually and it's probably going to be a little bit weaker um, where compared to here it's going to thump a little bit more um, but then i think we're going to see another band set up something like another band right we have this one no, no, that wasn't good all right we got this band doing something like that let's say and then we're going to have another one thump away inside maybe a little bit farther in here, uh, including more of uh, Southern Vermont, um, and then in, in between subsidence. So it's something, something to watch watch for. Um, uh, how big are the bands? That's going to be a big, uh, big question for some folks. Um, you know, if, if these if these are healthy, healthily sized bands, then a lot of people are going to be able to get a lot more people are going to be able to get into it and the intensity and the duration. So we're going to be looking for for that low pressure system. We're going to be looking for it. Is it going to really amplify quickly and then just drop off as it passes uh, and then as it moves uh, offshore uh, of southern New England? And then that would cause the banding here uh, to be not, not as strong across southern New England. And we would be looking at, instead of, uh, you know, a wide, 14 to 20 plus inches, we would be looking at something more on the lines of an 8 to 16 across southern New England. But all the indications of have been we're not going to see this low amplify really quickly and then just drop off right away. We're going to see we're going to see something similar like that. But I think we're going to see this amplify or intensify i guess i should be saying intensify and then slowly slowly intensify drops off the intensity level and then we'll continue to slowly intensify until it starts to pass off to the north uh, off to the north and east and at that point it will likely um, just start meandering around the north atlantic um, and probably and probably produce some snowfall for Nova Scotia and etc. And maybe some mixing, but nothing significant. Um, I haven't looked too much into that area, so I could, could be a little wrong. Uh, but what are we looking at for places in southern New England now? I think I mentioned the interior for for Albany, and I think we're gonna have a nice band set up here. Or I think we're gonna have a nice band set up here. But I also think that. That we're gonna have this band, we're gonna have a pivot, right? So we're gonna have a pivot rate, right? something like this. I don't know, I, just something like that to show, for example. And when we see see that happen, we're gonna see something. There's gonna be a moisture offshore, uh, the the energy offshore, the vorticity, and, and you can see you can see some heavier QPFs, um, uh, per precipitation, heavier precipitation, uh, offshore. And we're gonna see this. And some of this energy is going to be able to work in here and help some of these minor banding features um, help them help them be a little bit stronger potentially 
potentially than was originally being forecast, and we're seeing some of the high re high res resolution models starting to pick up on that. Um, like the NAND 3K has been picking up on that throughout the day, even though it has been uh, very bad, um, in my opinion. Um, uh, yeah. The models have not been great on this storm, um, but there has been, luckily, a somewhat general consensus for about uh, for about five days now on a potential winter storm. So I guess that's a good thing to have. Um, it doesn't hurt to look that early, but things can only change when you have a consensus from five days out. So I guess that's the downfall. Uh, how far north does this heavier um, heavier snowfall make it? I don't know. I think we're gonna see, we're gonna see a cutoff, but I think I think anywhere I think uh, anywhere in here, I think they should be all systems go for at least four to eight probably. Um, I can't make any promises north of that, but at, at the very minimum, all systems go for six plus inches. I think in those areas. Um, I, I'll show you my snowfall map in a second. Um, it's only for southern New England uh, because I don't want to mess with that Milly fix line. I've mentioned that to my Twitter followers. I do not want to mess with that Philly mix line. It's dangerous, and I do, I I could easily easily blow a forecast that way. And after I overdid them a little bit last week, um, I do not want to mess up um, as much again. So I, again, coming back to southern New England, we're gonna watch. We're going to watch that mix line here, um, potentially set up something like this. Could be a little bit farther north, but I don't think it will be. I think this mix line won't get any farther than here. Um, I think we're potentially some sleep mixes in, and even some sleep pellets are possible, are theoretically possible in there, but I don't think we'll see that. I don't think we'll see that. Uh, I think this mixing line does, let's see, get a little far. I don't think this mixing line goes any farther than here um where that doesn't mean the snow ratios will be will be particularly good in here but uh for, for most of the storm but that doesn't mean you're not going to snow heavily and i think the onset for the cape and islands i think the onset they will be seeing some potentially some very heavy snowfall um with warmer temperatures though i don't know how much of it will be able to stick i mean you're not gonna have to worry about saturating the ground like we will be up here uh, we're not gonna have to worry about that but we we are gonna have to worry about is you know the, those uh, liquid snow ratios and the um, may not be particularly good um because you will mix at some point in that area I just circled uh, across the cape and islands but how much snowfall you're able to get in before um is, is going to be important for you. Uh, how, many, how, how heavy can you get that uh, banding to set up over you in the Cape and Islands? That will determine a lot how much snowball you see with this event. Because on the back side, this will be a this will be a general potentially one to four on the back side uh, for the Cape and Islands, and on the onset it could be a potentially two to five um, in the beginning of the storm. So we're going to see how that sets up, and I don't. I'm not really including this area as much, but more, more, more of that, um, and we'll see how that sets up, and, you know, I don't know how far the snowfall is going to get back into Maine, <coughs> excuse me, I don't know how far the snowfall is going to get into Maine, um, but we'll see. We'll see Maine has the potential. Again, I think anywhere basically south, um, south and west of Portland has a chance to see six plus inches um, for sure. And I think, uh, you know, cut off this area even, I think that's probably your best chance for 12 plus um, in Maine. So, again, we need to see how the rain snow line mix up for many places along I-95. That will be, that will be very important to you, how that mix line sets up. And that's not where the mix line will be. I just draw drew along I-95 uh, just to give you an idea. Um, but we're going to need to watch very closely. And you know, we, we can see our snowfall is already getting going. Uh, this is going to be a big time event. Last thing is my snowfall map. Um, this is for Southern New England. This does not apply. I do think areas, uh, I have given my thoughts on Twitter from yesterday if you want to see those. And it's, Pretty similar, probably, to this, but I think uh, we're looking at coding, coding four on Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard, and then I think we're looking at potentially three to six plus, uh, 
for the for most of the Cape, and then potentially five to ten uh, uh, for extreme southeastern mass in the northwestern parts of the Cape, um, and then potentially eight to sixteen, eight to sixteen plus. I would rather go with um, eight to sixteen plus. Um, for places just south and east of Brockton and going down to the Connecticut coastline to 8 to 16 plus. And then um, New York City, uh, I think you're 8 to 16 plus as well. I don't include you on this map, obviously, but New York City, 8 to 16 plus. Um, I'll start naming some of the cities actually in northeast of my thoughts. I think Scranton, I think Scranton is going to be 16 to 24 plus. I think Philly, I don't know, but I think Philly sees, I think, I think Philly would, would Philly should see more than three inches. Uh, I don't know if you see more than six. I hope you do, um, but we'll see how that turns out. Um, uh, who else? Baltimore. One to three, maybe for Baltimore. Uh, we'll see how that turns out. Um, I'm not. I'm not too hopeful for Baltimore, DC, to get any big time snowfall. DC coding, uh, coding to two. I think to DC. Uh, Albany, you're not on this map. Eh, you're kind of on the map. Uh, 12 to 20 plus for Albany. I agree with that. Uh, Allentown, uh, I think. I think you're. I think you're 12 to 20 plus as well. Uh, it depends on how that heavy expanding sets up. Harrisburg, uh, I think Harrisburg is in line for 16 to 24 plus. So those are some of the cities outside of the map. In case you were curious of uh, what, what I'm thinking for them. Uh, but uh, again, coming back eight to sixteen for southeastern, eight to sixteen plus for southeastern mass. I don't put the plus there, but I, uh, I want, I would want to put the plus now. But I'm not gonna. Um, it's a minor achievement, but I'm not gonna post another snowfall map just to put a plus out there. Um, and then twelve to twenty plus is my jackpot for for much of Massachusetts, almost all of Connecticut, and in the Berks and up into upstate New York and parts and into southern Vermont too and then 8 to 16 plus um, to the north of that as well as some places we're going to see less in some of these numbers okay I'm going to remind you subsidence is going to cut down on some of those snowfall totals for people um, but I think a solid a solid floor um, anywhere anywhere where you see that 12 to Anywhere where you see that 12 to 20, I think almost everybody uh, should see, um, even if you bust, should see it 10 plus inches. Um, so I'm pretty hopeful for this storm. And yeah, one last thing, one last thing. There is the potential, depending on how far the upper level load tracks, for some a dry slot, a dry slot to develop in here. There is the potential, so you need to watch for it. Um, I don't know how big it will be. I don't know how long it will last, um, but there is the potential for a dry sod to last for a little long, for a little while. Not too long. It's going to fill in quickly after the upper low, upper level low passes. But just be aware, and um, you know, this is going to be a big time, big time snowstorm. We're talking uh, blockbuster accumulations here, and potentially historic for some locations. Uh, but that's going to about do it for me. I hope you all um, enjoyed the video. I guess I should start mentioning. Uh, give it a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe uh, to the channel if you would like uh, as well. All right. Have a good day. Peace out.